it got to a stage where I was like, it can't carry on unless if it carries on much longer. There's just, there's not even a point. It's just more of an existence than an actual life. I think when I first saw my doctor and then I left sixth form, from that period, I think I spent about two months and I barely even like left my room. I couldn't do basic tasks like I struggled to shower, wash, just shutting down, um, eat, yeah, just all the things that we associate with things that we, we just do without even thinking. It, it got to a stage where I was like, it can't carry on like this. If it carries on much longer, there's just, there's not even a point. It's just more of an existence than an yeah. actual life. I think like everyone when you first go through it and you realise there's an issue, it's, it's, if, you, it, if you want to speak to anyone at all, it's, it, it tends to be very few people you want to discuss it with yeah, because yeah. You, don't want to, you don't want to show that level of weakness, you don't want people to, who, who you've met in, in school, in, in work or whatever environment is to know that you're struggling because you don't want to project that to other people you want. Everyone wants to put across that image that yeah. they're happy in their own life, they're doing well. They're progressing because it's almost like a competition between everyone. Uh, everyone wants to feel like they're doing better than somebody else. And I got into campaign, I think. And then in particular when I started doing public speaking and really sharing my experiences, that sense of empowerment that I got from that was pretty, pretty incredible. I don't think I've ever... I remember the first time I did a talk, um, it would have been... June 2018 now, so about 18 months ago. I was like, oh, you know, we'll give it a go, see how, see how well I do. Um, and then I don't think I've ever got a feeling as good as what I got when it finished. It was like that. The, the thing I could compare to the most is like when you're a kid and it's Christmas Day and you're like yeah. getting up. That's the sort of feeling that I felt. And I Oh, it's such a massive achievement because when I was at school and we had to do um, our own talk in front of the class face and I literally spent a week off school. That's right, yeah, you did. Um, a mental health problem was never picked up on because my mum initially thought it was being bullied or yeah. something else was going on and it wasn't necessarily an issue mentally. Um, I, when I did go in and eventually uh, do it, about a week later, I remember just standing there shuddering. I couldn't... <laughs> I had a dry mouth, the words were just spluttering out with no real conviction, I was shaking and I just couldn't wait for it to end. So to go from that stage of barely being able to stand up in front of 30 people I'd spent four years of my life with at school, to standing up in front of a room of 100 plus people talking about the most personal aspects of my life, the, the periods where it got that difficult that I, I wasn't really sure how I was going to go from barely being able to stand up and then to be able to confidently stand in front of people and speak about something. And then not only that, want to do it more. I even doing it with a load of other people would have made me feel dread. So to do it with one other person and then eventually start doing it on my own, that felt like Absolutely. a massive thing that I'd overcome. experience that I've had in terms of my own mental health is giving me that burn and desire to want to help other people whether it's people that have never gone through it before or people that have I want to be able to give them that almost olive branch to be able to speak out themselves because if they see someone else um, doing it they're more inclined to do it themselves and I, I know that if I do that even if it's just making them think more about mental health or to check up on the people in their life or to do more self-care or any any aspect. If I can do that, it's better than me not doing it at all. I was very much a massive introvert. I became very withdrawn. When at lunchtime, I would spend all my breaks in library and IT suites to just to shut myself away from people and prevent potential embarrassment or ridicule but I think now when I've got because of the stuff I've done and speaking in front of people it's giving me that confidence like, although I might not be the best at making friends and meeting new people I enjoy it as well I yeah. think I revel in that meeting yeah. new people because I know 
it can empower me and make me feel yeah. better about myself. And the biggest thing of going course, through a mental health problem for me has been, like you're saying, I know myself so much better now than I used to. Yeah. I know what I know what I enjoy. I know what I yeah. dislike. I know what I'm capable of. I know what I'm not capable of, and that makes life so much easier because you can weigh up what you sh what you shouldn't be doing and what you should. You know what is going to potentially trigger you or make you feel worse about yeah. yourself, so you can stay away from it. And then the things that you do enjoy, you should do more of. It seems yeah. like a simple concept. Just do so many things good in my life, even though it's been a bad situation, have come from getting involved in campaigning, the people that I've met, the friends that I've made, the experiences that I've had as well that I'd never, I'd have never imagined that I'd, I'd be on, I'd be on radio or I'd be, you know, travelling to London and staying on my own. I can definitely vouch for that theory amongst, I know a lot of professionals say you've got to, particularly if it's anxiety, you've got to expose yourself to situations that make you feel uncomfortable and to become comfortable with them. I think in that particular situation, if you're feeling that low, sometimes you associate the place that you're in as all bad memories and I suppose some people think, oh, if you can get out into a new environment and meet new people and create a different life, that could have more of a positive impact than just remaining where you are and settling. And then realising your capabilities as well, because obviously if you get into any sort of movement, whether it's mental health or whether it's climate change, women's rights, whatever it is that people get involved in, you've got... When you get into it, obviously what draws people together is the passion of the subject. Um, right, but though. from my experience you go into it and then you've got to realise what your strengths and what your weaknesses are because you might want to go in and start filming or start blogging or public speaking but you've got to find out what works yeah. for you I think at the time they seem so small and pretty insignificant but when you, you look back and reflect on things you realise how much of an impact they made and just how we one decision to go it. to a certain place and do a certain yeah. thing to change your life for the better. Yeah. Like you say, with your relationship, if you wouldn't have made that decision Absolutely, to go out, you yeah. wouldn't have met your partner. Or if I wouldn't have gone and done a workshop, I wouldn't have met one of my closest friends. Or it's amazing how yeah. much a small decision to do something can impact you. Know, at the time, you just think, oh, what's the point? What am I going to get out of it? Yeah. Nothing ever works out yeah, for me. It could benefit me, but for the, sm for the small chance that it will hurt me, I'm going to stay away because it's self-preservation. Yeah. And the longer you've been in that and the more the hurt was to start with, yeah. the harder it is to get yeah, out. Yeah, it's harder to come back. But... It is possible, isn't it? You know, because I've done it, you've done it. Or should we say we're all in the process of doing it, tipping the, yeah. tipping the balance in our favour. I think that's why I love films like Rocky or... Rocky's a good one as well. Or, or yeah. war films or things yeah. like that. I love them stories where it's like you, you think someone's going to fail someone you don't like it almost they there. almost do and fail but then they come back off the road yeah it's like they come, they come um, like the jaws of defeat to the yeah. powers of victory obviously yeah. me at the moment I'm, I'm applying to go to universities and then when obviously i get my results i have to make a decision on which university i want to go to i think one aspect of university that worries me is entering a completely new environment and how I'm going to deal with that because yeah. although like you know I'm in my recovery I'm a lot better than I was say three years ago like I mentioned I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle being in a new place where I don't have the home comforts I don't have yeah. a lot of what has contributed to me feeling better in myself although I'm not recovered so to speak has been my environment and developing better habits where I live so if I go to a new place what is going to enable me to carry on those habits in the new environment basically you go back into old habits as well as like we were talking about before with the uh, self preservation because you're in a new place and you don't really know how to occupy your time or what to do you just go into old habits don't you because it's what you know and I think that's why so, so many people are going to particularly with universities and studying away from home even people that are perceived to be of good mental health start to 
start to slip and really struggle in their life because they're so used to a certain way of life and it's everything's just been completely altered and they're yeah. just like what what do I do where's my purpose and my focus I think people do get too caught up in services obviously in this country in particular they're probably in it inadequate I, th I think you'd struggle to argue with that but then because they're in, because they are inadequate and they're not providing enough support for people as they should that makes conversations and grassroots projects like yours and other things more important because they can fill the gap that the services don't uh, tend to I feel like a large majority of people who uh, who have recovered so to speak who, or, who are in a much better place than they were say a few years before however long whether it's down to the clinical professional support or it's just making more positive changes in their own life it'd be interesting what was to see it for you? The, the positive changes that have been made in my life have mostly been down to my own um, Hard work and, and discipline. I think. Like, I'm not gonna. No, I th I'm, um, agree with you. I'm not gonna go against the support that I've had because the majority of people that I've seen from my mental health have been very supportive and they've done all they can to help me. But from my experience, it hasn't supported me as well as I hoped it had. Maybe that's because I am a perfectionist and I want everything to just change at the flick of the switch. I got to that where it's like you're waiting around for services you, you don't know what, what the next time you're going to see someone or or what support you're going to get whether it's going to be long term short term yeah. Yeah, good or bad you don't even I think when I got to that stage I realized I had I had to put it in my own hands and not leave it in someone else's everyone I know that's that's David and Goliath has won that battle, won that the Rocky off the ropes has done it because of their own they relation. have taken responsibility for their own story. I got to a point when I was really struggling bad with my mental health, particularly when I started to speak about it more that I was just relying too much on other people. I felt like if I confided in someone or, or did something to get someone's attention that they would change it all for me and I wouldn't have to do it myself. I think it's great to get support of other people because that can be a massive benefit to us but I think it can become really damaging if you rely solely on other people to solve your own you know, issues because people, other people have their own lives, they can't be there for you 100% of the time.